Well, we're live now, so everyone, <laughs> everyone's listening to you. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Taylor and Alan. <laughs> Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan. I've seen that. So before we start the podcast, we want to thank our sponsors, Boss Play. They're in an escape room out in Oceanside, California. Currently, they have two main rooms and a third uh, traveling mini game called the Asylum. Traveling mini game. A tra- How does that work? So, the story of it is you're a, you have been diagnosed with split personality disorder. So it's basically the movie Split. One body, two minds. The doctors okay. say that you are crazy. You'll be locked up for ten minutes and have been left a few clues inside that only a sane person would understand to help you escape. The doctors will be back in 10 minutes for your lobotomy. So it's a two player game. It's 10 minutes long okay. and they're going to take it around. They haven't announced where it's going to be yet, but it is something that they're working on doing. Huh? Okay. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, no, it sounds like a great idea. It's a very interesting concept. Yeah. But if you are around okay. the Oceanside area, you should definitely go check out Boss Play. They've been helping us out for over a year now. They are just the best. Even with Taylor being a part of this podcast, they said, you know Somehow. what? <laughs> We're still going to help you guys. I don't know. It kind of sounds like they're doing it in spite of you. They're giving me money. I think in if spite I did the me? podcast myself, uh-huh. they You'd would support it. Double. But if I was not a part of the podcast, they wouldn't support it. Mm, maybe. I see that. All right, uh, Taylor. This week, or this yes, last sir. couple weeks, this is this last year. We, uh, yeah, this, since the beginning of the year, we haven't done a podcast for a while. We've taken a couple That's weeks great. off, but I watched the movie Glass. I watched one movie in that time. <laughs> I saw Glass uh, since we last talked. Okay, and it is uh, not good, in my opinion. Yeah, I I was pretty I disappointed. So. Uh, my theory well, is. If if you like Unbreakable more than Split. Ugh, how is that even possible? I don't know. But there's people that do. If you like Unbreakable. I don't want to meet that person. <laughs> if you like Unbreakable more than Split, you will like Glass. It's very similarly paced. It's pretty slow. Um, the action is very similar. It's a lot of uh, slamming people into walls who are hanging on your back. Not It's not okay. like... It's not like a Marvel fight scene at all. It's much more like Unbreakable. And there's a lot well, of... Isn't that good for you? Don't you not like Marvel fight scenes? I don't like CGI fight scenes. But I'm saying I don't I don't like Unbreakable fight scenes. I don't like Glasses fight scenes. They're pretty, pretty lazy in terms of uh, what they do. Like it was cool in Unbreakable because it was so slow and that when it finally happened, it felt like it was fast paced, but it, it's not. Uh, in glass, they start off with it, and it visually it's very reminiscent of the fight scene from Unbreakable. I think that was the intention, and it, it's it's not one that you want to like call back to. And then there's a lot more references to Unbreakable yeah. in this, um, like the bench press scene and just a lot of different stuff. And it, I don't know. So if you like Unbreakable more, I think you will enjoy Glass because it's more of that. If you like split more, I think you're going to be really disappointed with glass because it uh, does everything that split did over does it to the point where it's exhausting Mm. and they just kind of ruin, in my opinion, glass makes split a worse movie. Oh, really? That sucks. Yeah, because it's, it's adding backstory. It's adding things to its lore of split of why things happened and how they work and all this stuff. And with uh-huh. that, it's like, oh, this kind of, with that extra knowledge, it kind of makes Split a worse movie. Mm. But uh, people are, you know, on both sides, people really like Glass and a lot of people really hated it. It's just, it's a pretty divisive movie. Hmm. Do you think you're going to go see it? I don't think I will go see it. I'm sure that I will see it probably when it comes out. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, I, 
I, so we watched Unbreakable and Split earlier this year, or last year, I guess. And I found Unbreakable uh-huh. so boring. And it's I was shocked boring. because I loved it's, that movie. Oh, really? Yeah. I had never seen it before. Maybe if I had seen it when I was younger, I would have liked it, but nah. Yeah. Well, I like. I thought the twist at the end with Gla- or with um, Samuel Jackson, Mr. Glass's character, um, mm-hmm. I thought that was great. But then rewatching it, knowing the twist, it's really boring. Yeah. Seeing how slow they paced it, it's really boring. The dialogue is terrible. They're just, I don't know. And Glass, like, so M. Night Shyamalan is great at coming up with concepts, right? Like these ideas. I, that, his ideas, yes. So his ideas, his concepts are great. His writing is his awful. execution is, is bad. Yeah. So he in glass, what happens is he he goes he skips setups. He doesn't he doesn't establish anything. He just goes to pay off to pay off to pay off. There's a character in the movie who just knows everything with no they they kind of explain it at the end why they know uh, at the end, what's up, plagues? Um, how she knows so much information, but it's really not earned. Right, spoilers. Now I know it's a she. Yeah, sorry, it's not earned. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um, just like how she knows exactly how things work and who does what and what they're capable of and just every she knows everything the audience knows, but all these people are like, pretty secretive about what they yeah. are able to do so it like makes she no sense yeah and uh okay. i don't know it 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 was not not my favorite i was not not happy with it so how would you rank the three split is the best then glass yeah. and then unbreakable okay yeah but like i said glass makes split a worse movie Split should have been its own its own thing. Shouldn't have brought it into this universe. I know there's been talk that M. Night had this vision from the very beginning that this was going to always be part of it, that uh, uh, James McAvoy's character was going to be a part of Unbreakable originally, but it was mm-hmm. it, it lost the focus because he was such an interesting character, which in my mind is crazy. Why would you get rid of your most interesting character to tell a story of someone who's not as interesting? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, why would that be your choice? It seems so dumb. Hmm. Do you truly believe when he did Unbreakable that he had this all planned? Not not to this extent, not in this way or this um, style. Do you think when he started Split, Mm -hmm. that was even the intention? Or did it turn into a, hey, you know what? I could make this part of my Unbreakable Universe. Yeah. Well, he said he said himself that the character was supposed to be an Unbreakable originally. And he cut it out. And I feel so, like that wouldn't have even made sense. Not really, no. But, so, <clears throat> I think the guy who kidnaps the family at the end was supposed mm-hmm. to be the Split character. The character from Split. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, that was supposed to be, so it wasn't going to be, like, fully fleshed out, but it was going to be, like, a split personality person doing this. Um, But I think that's probably as far as he had it, and he was just like, oh, this is kind of distracting from the story I want to tell, so let's just not use it. And he kind of put it on the back burner and then developed it later on Mm -hmm. um, and, like, kind of fleshed it out and made that. And... I don't know if his intention while writing Split was to put it into Unbreakable, but I think maybe if that character was from the movie, he got to the end and he's like, I need a big twist, something that will, yeah. you know, really shock people. Uh, putting it, putting Bruce Willis in it is going to be a big deal because people love Unbreakable. And it was. People were like super pumped and, you know, really excited that it was combining them. And, uh, Having glass, See, I, people I, were excited for, but it's I didn't just get that terrible. payoff because I hadn't seen Unbreakable yet. Yeah, so I watched Glass or I watched Split, and then I watched the after credit scene, and I was like, I don't, I don't know what this is. Yeah, 
I don't know what this is supposed to be. So I didn't get to enjoy that. Yeah. No, if you didn't know, it, I mean, it really wouldn't matter. It didn't add anything to split. Um, yeah. And it didn't add anything to glass, honestly. Like, hmm. I don't know. It, they're all, they're, it was just not very good. It, like, but uh, yeah, so that's that's what I saw over the last few weeks. Okay. All right. Uh, another thing we had talked about a little bit uh, was Into the Spider Verse, but I hadn't seen it. You had, but uh-huh. I, I also saw that during our hiatus or whatever you want to call this. Now I watched this movie and I was convinced you probably would not like it. Really? Why is that? Because because I liked it so much. <laughs> Uh no, I I really enjoyed it. I thought this was one of the That is that is bonkers to me. <laughs> I thought this was That one is of, it's top 3 Spider-Man movies. Uh I think this is one of the best. I think this is one of the best superhero movies. Oh, okay. Um It's it's So the music is great in it. Yep. The animation Which is, is something that you don't even normally Yeah. recognize. I normally don't hear music. If it if I notice music, it's generally because it's so bad that it's oh, distracting. Yeah. But I I really enjoyed the music. I really enjoyed how much it added to the movie. Um the animation was like exactly the style I think you would want for Oh yeah. For this it, the vibrancy, it fits for mm-hmm. this movie. You wouldn't want to have that with everything, but it makes sense. Like this is how you should adapt a comic book into a movie these yep. live action stuff is hindering it like i compared it to aquaman because well, you're limited yeah you know you they're aquaman and people are people i always say like i hate the the cgi in aquaman and people always say well how are you supposed to be underwater and you know do all this stuff without cgi and it's like well just make it a cartoon then if yeah. you can't do it live action what's the point of doing it live action it doesn't yeah. add anything. Because it only takes away. People want to see Jason Momoa. Yeah, but it, it just takes away from the overall story. And watching watching Aquaman the whole time, I was like, "Man, the CGI like, looks terrible. It's so distracting." I knew it was CGI. I knew what was going on wasn't real because the story was so weak and the <laughs> the CGI mm-hmm. wasn't great. When I watched Into the Spider Verse, the whole thing is obviously animated. But I forgot because I got so yeah, wrapped into real. the story. Mm-hmm. Like I, yeah, I it accepted was fantastic. it. Fantastic! It's so good. What did the one thing about it that I've been waiting to talk to you about is yeah. what did you think about Spider Ham? The, the fact that it's like <laughs> no, the fact that it's like a successor to the original Spider Man trilogy. Well, it's like a, it takes place in that universe. It takes place in all the universes. Does it? Mm-hmm. They reference all of them. Oh, okay. I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like it uh, talks. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I would have to go back and watch to be positive. But in the uh, what they did type stuff was a mm-hmm. reference to all six of the movies. Oh, okay. But, um, mainly, I, I'm talking about the dance from Spider-Man 3. So the tone of this movie fits with all those callbacks same with um like lego batman or um like the lego movie like that style of they're not trying to make this a grounded reality based thing they're like no we we know what this is so when they throw in those callbacks they fit they don't stand out they don't distract from the reality they're trying to create because they're not trying to create a reality. They're just trying to tell you a fun story. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that's yeah, the, no, for sure. That's my issue with um, a lot of like the DC stuff when they th- try to interject right. comedy or callbacks or whatever, like references to stuff. It's mm-hmm. they're like, this is real. This is a world that we have built. We want you to accept it. Now here's a reference that doesn't fit in that in those rules that we've established. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it doesn't work uh, the same way because it doesn't, it doesn't hold on to uh, what they're telling you who they're doing. But with into the spider verse, the whole thing 
is uh you know much more aware of its its tone yeah um okay i can't my for some reason the blue color for whoever <laughs> just said something is just completely fuzzed out i can't read his meister name meister 777 meister says darn it i haven't seen it yet but i have to it is it is fantastic into the spider verse it's so it's so good i i i knew that i would probably like it on like because i'm a huge spider-man fan but i mm-hmm. you know it took my son to see it and then i'm pretty sure i liked it way more than he did i know he really liked it but i was like this is fantastic like this yeah. is so good yeah no the the story like i i kind of felt the same way because we took our kids and i was like this is going to be kind of a like I, I enjoyed the Lego movie. I enjoyed Lego Batman. Like they were fun to watch, and like I appreciated the references. Um, but the the stories weren't that compelling. They weren't like gripping. The themes yeah. of Spider Man into the Spider Verse uh, mm-hmm. are much more serious and much more heavy. You know, like the theme of uh, being accepted by your father and you know, kind of being a failure and trying to figure it out and. Uh, overcoming fear, like all all that stuff, is relatable to everyone. Why well, I, I think Spider Man in general is one of the most relatable comic book superheroes that there is. Yeah, I think that's why he's he's so. I don't know. You can just relate to him through many ages. I guess you could say. I don't know. He's that. He's always been my favorite. Yeah. Why? Well, because we but all that feel. Reason, uh incapable (laughs) life feels bigger than all of us you know like we all feel like wow this is way harder than i expected but i just have to keep going i have to keep trying i have to persevere otherwise i lose right and i think that's relatable across the board overall though yeah fantastic movie every i uh what's his name jake johnson yes i thought he was great uh watching um, so starting it when they had the other peter parker yeah not, I'm not to, to spoil anything that? i don't know who the voice was but like that was, threw me off so much because i was like somebody. i thought because he opens up the uh uh with a voiceover and i was like man the audio is screwed up in this theater because this does not sound like jake johnson at all <laughs> and it took me a minute to like realize what was going on and I was like, oh, okay, that makes way more sense. But uh, yeah, no, I was like was, uh, really thrown Chris off. Chris Pine. Oh, okay, Chris Pine, yeah, Captain Kirk. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, In the Spider-Verse is great. It's in my top yeah. five superhero movies, comic book adaptations. I would much rather see you know, movies like this, not necessarily in this style. And that, that's the other thing. Sony is copywriting the animation style of this. So people can't can just, I guess so. I mean, they had a very specific, you know, way of doing it. One of the, one of the things I wanted to talk about with the animation uh, before we get off of that, I mm-hmm. hated so much the way they fuzzed out the background to make it seem like it's focused on the main character. It felt like the main character, I that. really? So the main character would be in focus, but everything else in the background look like a 3d movie without the glasses on to like oh, okay. make you zone like hone in on yeah. what, what they want and it like hurt my eyes i felt like almost seasick uh, when they would do it like when they did it a lot um especially when uh miles and gwen would interact because it was always mm-hmm. like trying to really focus in but there's a lot going on in the background it it, <laughs> it was not my favorite i thought that was that hurt the okay. movie but other than that what like, did you think about uh nicholas cage he was distracting too really his i didn't I, actually i didn't mind him uh yeah no his voice stood out to me it seemed like a weird fit he nicholas cage is like a very specific actor voice and the character was smaller than the actor yeah do you know what true. i'm saying and so it was just like mm-hmm. I kind of kept expecting more from that character, more from his performance, and it never came. And so, like, while it wasn't bad, it was kind of distracting of, like, why is he doing this? You know, why is Nicolas yeah. Cage a part of this if he's not really a part of this? Because, like, he did, he could have done all that in an afternoon, you know? Like, it wasn't, mm-hmm. didn't seem that involved. 
Um, and then I didn't, I didn't mind Spider Ham as much as I thought I would. I really See, I thought, thought that you would hate that too. I thought, yeah, no, I did too. I thought for sure I would not like it, but with them doing the whole multiverse, you know, storyline and having so many different, you know, options throughout yeah. the, you know, all the universes. It's like, okay, they at least logically it tracks with the story they're telling. While it mm-hmm. seems goofy and kind of childish or whatever, it still fits inside of what they're doing, inside of the story they're telling. Yeah. I'm glad that they were able to get a, a Stan Lee cameo in there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's just, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I thought I thought uh, Leif Schreiber was a good kingpin. Oh, is that who that was? I didn't realize that. Yeah, I thought I thought it was great. Yeah, no, I, I just like how ridiculous they make him look because that's kind of how he is. Yeah, and that's something that you can't do in live action. But he's like supposed to be this hulking menace of a person. Yeah, with no neck, and I think yeah, I I thought it was great. So here in Thailand. We, most movies in English only play at like eight o'clock at night. They start mm-hmm. at eight. And uh, so we wanted to take our kids because our kids really like Spider-Man. And we're like, oh, we should take them even though eight o'clock is their bedtime. So we knew it was going to be kind of uh, pushing the limits for them. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went and took them. And I, the credits rolled and I told my wife, I was like, oh, there's supposed to be this really funny after credit scene. I think it will be mm-hmm. worth sticking around for. And then we did, and I've never been more disappointed in an after credit scene really? than that one. I, like it I was, it was fun. It was fine, but for how much people built it up, it. Oh, uh, see, I didn't get, I didn't get any build up to it. Yeah, see, I kept seeing like you have to stay for the after credit scene. It's so funny, and it's, it's a meme. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's, a, it's a live meme. Yeah, and I don't know, like. To me, I don't find memes funny as it is. It I don't see how it's oh. not just joke stealing. Boo. But like, uh-huh. you know what I mean? It's just knock knock jokes for the digital age. Some some are creative. Some That's will true. catch yeah. off guard. But it's just there's a format, and you copy it, and you add your own punchline, and it's just like, okay, like I I get it. I understand why people like it, but it it's not. <laughs> you are not in touch with the millennial age. I, I bet you don't even like to floss. The, the my mouth or my body. Sorry, plagues. Plagues is is upset with me for disliking memes. <laughs> I, that's how I feel. Memes are driving the world these days. How, okay, how are memes not just knock knock jokes though? Um. Maybe they are, but that doesn't mean they're not funny. I love a good knock knock joke. <laughs> but knock knock jokes aren't funny because there have been so many of them. No, they're not funny just because they're not funny. No, there's been so many of them. They don't catch you by surprise anymore. Uh, maybe. I don't know. They're just not funny. <laughs> That's how I feel about memes. I oh, know. I love memes. But yeah, so adding that at the end was kind of, uh, it, if it wasn't built up, I would not have minded. I wouldn't have cared. But having yeah, see, it wasn't built up for me, so I didn't know, I didn't know what to expect. And and I've, I'm at the point now. Braden will refuse to leave a movie until he's seen after credits because that's kind of the age we live in, where almost everything really has it. Yeah, I never. And it's funny because. My my mom took him and and uh, the other boys to go see a movie on Saturday, The uh, Dog's Way Home, uh-huh. and would not let anybody leave until they watched all the credits. Your son or your mom wouldn't. My son. Yeah, he made everyone stay to watch the app just to see if there was an after credit scene. Was it? What, there, I would imagine there wasn't, right? No, there was not. <laughs> <laughs> was he disappointed? He doesn't understand that it's not like every movie. Yeah. It's just. You well, know, it's a certain type of movie. It feels like it. Like I, I have to Google it now. When like, oh, I, I usually do. Have, if it's a superhero movie, I'm you know, ninety nine percent, it's gonna have it. Any um, other movie where there's like the potential for a sequel or something, or it's like a remake or something like that, yeah. I'll I'll look just to see. Yeah. 
All right. Well, unless you have anything else about Into the Spider-Verse. I, or... I have nothing else. But actually. <laughs> okay. Yep. Well, have you seen the trailer for the new Spider-Man movie? Oh, yeah. yeah. Spoiler, man. I was so upset about that. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler, man. Um, it's... I... I, it's like I like I like it, but I hate it so much. Yeah. Well, I like it as its own thing, but I hate the fact that it it deflates Infinity War. Yeah. Yeah. And people, so <laughs> Fire Resistant Podcast has been arguing with me that mm-hmm. it is gonna take place before Infinity War, and it's a terrible idea. And he is just lying to himself yeah, so he can enjoy. Is endgame it is not the producer is quoted saying this takes place minutes after the end of endgame 10 minutes after endgame and it's just so clear the timeline like i've known now that that doesn't mean chronologically well couldn't technically they start at the end of endgame and have some time travel stuff in there and what we see in the trailer takes place instead i don't know no it's not going to do anything interesting with that it's just going to do like what they're showing you is what they're going to do in game like everyone knows and when infinity war happened everyone knows all these characters are coming back and some people try to pretend like no maybe maybe everyone's going to get replaced in these upcoming movies it's like no they're they're coming back. No. It's a comic book. It's a soap opera. There's no way no they're one... not going to bring back the cash cow Spider-Man. Yeah. Come on. No one is going to die permanently. Like it just no, no one that we know has future movies coming at least. Yeah, like, for we sure. Know there's well, a good chance this is the end of Iron Man and Captain and a lot of the original Avengers, but it's it's not the end of Black Panther. It's not the end of Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, the Guardians of the Galaxy. None of those. Agent Coulson has come back. Nick Fury has come back. Loki has come back. The only person who hasn't come back in my memory is Edward Chris Silver. Norton. Yeah, that's true. He's the only one who has died and has stayed dead. And that's I think because he is dead, dead though. Uh, I think so. Plague said Steve Rogers might die permanently since the actor's contract is apparently up, which is true. He's he's done with the movies after the, uh, Endgame. I think he's gonna stay which, in the past. Which sucks. I don't I think, like knowing contract nonsense because yeah. I don't like having to base like theories based on real life situations. Yeah. Like I just I want to believe that maybe he 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 lives or maybe he dies based on good writing or writing, not because he's done. Yeah. So, and they don't have an option. Yeah. I think so, that's stupid. What I think is going to happen to in response to plagues is that uh, Steve Rogers, they're going to time travel, go around. He's going to end back up in his original time, you know, and be with Peggy. He's going to stay with Peggy. And he's going to just live out his life that. like that. Um, and that will be the end of his story. I think Tony Stark. But will he continue to be Captain America? I would assume so. I don't know. I don't know how you'd work all that out. But I think I think he's just gonna end up. I don't think he's gonna die, but I think he'll go back in time, and that will kind of be the end of it. I can see that. And then I'm Falcon thinking. will take over the mantle of Captain America, and Iron Man will somewhat retire. But it uh, it's hard to say exactly. I he's in my head. He's either gonna die sacrificing himself to save everyone mm-hmm. because that's kind of always been his story about being yeah. selfish um even from the first avengers the plot was you know tony or captain america calling him out like you're never going to be the one to give yourself up to save everyone else type of thing um mm-hmm. oh yeah no it's always been going yeah it's it's been going that direction yeah. so so i think he's going to sacrifice himself for everyone either by death or by sacrificing Iron Man finally. And uh-huh. Captain America is going to end up going back in time. Um, let's see. The plague says, I don't like it either, but unfortunately that is the way the internet is now. It's like yeah. a professional wrestling. There's no surprise returns anymore. It's spoiled on social media weeks before. Yeah. And it, uh, I don't, the internet. I hate Al Gore for inventing the internet. <laughs> I, the thing that frustrates me is I don't I'll never vote for him. I don't look 
for any of this information. I just, it's just there. Yeah. It's I just there. find it out. Like you don't have to look anymore. You used to. Yeah. You used there was to, a time in the internet age where you still had to seek out stuff like that. Yeah. And now it's just in your face. Yeah. Because all, Marvel is the biggest thing ever right now. So anything Marvel related is blasted everywhere. Yeah. Well, I had a friend who, as soon as he got home from Infinity War, he saw Infinity War the Thursday night that it came out in America. So I had seen it two weeks earlier because it came out early in Thailand. But he saw it oh, Thursday right. night, midnight showing, got on Facebook and he was like, holy crap, everyone dies in this movie. Like half Gosh, the people geez. die. And I'm just like, what, what compels you to come out and straight up spoil it without like a spoiler warning, without like saying like, hey, I want to talk about, you know what I mean? Like nobody, like most people hadn't seen the movie and he's just like, here's exactly the ending no warning attached you know i'll tell you exactly why it's this it's the same concept as when you go to like and i don't think you see it as much anymore maybe but you go to like a youtube video or something yeah and the first comment is just first yeah like people just want to be first they want you to know that you hey you saw before everyone else and i had this huge event called infinity war happen to me before anybody else yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's annoying. It's pretty stupid. I hate it. But anyway, what I was saying earlier, everyone knew with Infinity War, everyone was coming back. That wasn't yeah. no one. No one was really believing that any of these characters died. But people were like holding on to it, and with Endgame coming up, it was clear that they were coming back. But I just don't get. I don't get why they're trying to. Uh, make you believe so, one thing is happening when they're revealing that it's not happening based like marvel doing it you know when like, is when is the next spider-man movie coming out june oh is it really june yeah it's like two months after in game and so oh, okay so i thought it was sony, further off i was gonna say why not drop that trailer after in game yeah sony is doing it and that's part of the issue sony is uh the one who is publishing the far from home um, but not Marvel. So, I, hey, can you get headphones? I can hear myself on your thing. I have headphones. Hmm. Can you turn me down a little bit? Maybe it's too loud. I've been trying to do that for 20 years. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I just, I, I want to enjoy the story. I don't want any of the extra stuff. I don't really, I, I like watching the trailers right before I see the movie, but beyond that, I'm, not really a fan of like watching the trailers building up hype getting into it all that stuff because it it's always just kind of a letdown yeah like with spider-man into the spider-verse i didn't really know anything about it coming into it like i I heard that it was great and i heard from the people that i i tend to agree with and they're like Mm -hmm. saying things like even with all the hype even with all the build-up this movie still delivers so i was like maybe this is gonna be really good and it was fantastic do you think this will lead to some live action Miles Morales in the future? Yes, but not for a while. Part of the uh, Spider Man, like the the Sony Spider Man universe? No, I don't think it'll be connected that way. I think Sony's gonna get away from live action think- and start okay. doing the animated stuff. I think that's why they are copywriting that animation style. I mean, okay. that that movie did so much better than Venom. You know, like there's oh, not yeah. even comparison and yeah. it's the same property, you know, it's the same, it's all together. And, mm. uh, they'll, I think they'll let Marvel probably start doing the live action stuff and they'll just stick with the animated, but I don't know, yeah. you know, they make bad movies. So uh, what, maybe they won't. now the one thing I am super excited for is Mysterio. I've always loved Mysterio Yeah, and it looks pretty cool. I like it looks exactly how I had hoped it would. Yeah, I think Jake Gyllenhaal will do a good job. I think so. I would like to see Tobey Maguire against Jake Gyllenhaal though. Oh yeah. That's a an unfortunate That's the Spider that's the Spider-Man <laughs> battle we we never got. Yeah. Ted, they they talked about had they done Spider-Man 4 it would have been Mysterio. Mm. And yeah. that got me really excited, but it was not to be. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's cool I I think what's happening in the trailer is Jake Gyllenhaal is producing all those monsters that he's fighting. Well, yeah, he's like a, he's an illusionist. Yeah. 
because uh, he's so trying he to be a hero. He builds himself up to be a hero yeah. it's by creating these non-actual threatening monsters and then defeating them. Yeah. So Plague says, now all we need is the X-Men and the Fantastic Four to show up in Endgame. Uh, I, Ugh, I, I'm okay with X-Men. I can do without the Fantastic Four. Yeah, I've seen I enough. Fantastic Four. Unless, I know, it is, unless it's Chris Evans as the Human Torch. And he quits being Steve Rogers and comes back as a Fantastic or the Human Torch. And then doesn't like acknowledge it. Like everyone knows it's him <laughs> and he acts like it's not. That would be so funny. He won't acknowledge it. Um, yeah, I, I know a lot of the comic book fans really enjoy Fantastic Four, but I've never been into them. I, I, I'm not a big comic book yeah. reader as it is, but uh, the movies are terrible. Like I, they I'd be really, happy really bad. with not seeing them on screen anymore. X Men into uh, the Avengers would be interesting, but I have a hard time seeing how they can make that work. With, I have a hard time seeing how they could make that work canonically with the X Men not ever well, being referenced. They can't. They can't. Re- reference in the MCU, but that's and vice that's versa. Never been their concern. Yeah, it's just I, hard because X Men is so it it almost needs its own universe because there's so many characters. Yeah, well, it works in the comics um, because there's so many characters. Anyways, it doesn't it doesn't seem like it over bloats it. Um, so would we see Michael B. Jordan as the Human Torch? Also, I would have Im- I would imagine X Men and Fantastic Four, if they showed up in the MCU, will all be completely recast. I don't think anyone. Okay. I don't think anyone's gonna transfer over, which is unfortunate with uh, Michael Wolverine. Fassbender and oh, yeah. um, James McAvoy. I Wolverine, yes, but I I think he would be too distracting. I think you need to put it Wolverine, would. the character, on the shelf for a long time. Yeah, if anything, run with the the new girl that you that you came up with in Logan. Yeah. X twenty two. If you want X-24. that type of character. Is it X twenty two? I think it's X twenty two, but I, I don't remember. Twenty three, twenty nine. I think twenty three is the copy. Thirty three. I don't remember. I think though. it's seventeen. <laughs> um, I don't remember. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I would like to see that all all the Marvel stuff finally together, so they could do whatever they want and tell all the stories the right way. Mm-hmm. But now at this point it's kind of hard to see how they could make all that work but i mean they've done a good job at incorporating new characters and you know like with guardians and dr strange and all that like it hasn't really been a uh bump in the road um uh, for mm-hmm. it like it all fit like you know, black panther because they all kind of have their own universe you know with wakanda and the uh yeah. spirit realm and the the universe um and they just all meld together the problem with X Men is it is already in a grounded world, as same as Avengers. So yeah, it's like, it's, and it's pretty jumbled too. It's just gonna make it even more confusing. Yeah, and with X Men, their story is very much about um, oppression from people who aren't mutants. Right. And so there's not a lot of reason for them to not have been known. So it's not like they could live in secret, and then. Mm-hmm the storyline is it's happened for a long time. So it'd be really hard to have someone like professor X teaching mutants without them ever being referenced before. Yeah. I mean, if, if they're going to do it, I'd like to see, I'd like to see a handful of mutants that, that haven't gotten a whole lot of screen time. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Start some new stories. Um, Plague says, Mm-hmm, go ahead. If they do the Civil War two storyline at some point, they'll need to they'll need the X Men eventually. Since Civil War two was X Men versus Avengers, yeah, I think if X Men do show up, it will be that. I think it will be them against the Avengers that, and that will be kind of how they introduce it as enemies. I mean, that's kind of how they introduce everyone in the Avengers in the MCU. They show up and they fight for a while and then they become friends. I think it'll be a much bigger uh, deal with how many characters and then it can actually go against each other um but I, I think that's that'll be how they introduce them is that they'll be enemies for a while and then they'll figure things out do you think captain america could be wolverine do i think could beat him or be him beat beat like defeat him uh or any of those guys iron man 
those guys could they beat Wolverine? I don't think any of them can beat each other, can they? I mean, that's kind of the whole. Everyone is in a stalemate. Yeah, that's true. Um, but in my I think head, if they wanted to, they could all beat Hawkeye. Let's be honest. <laughs> in my head, Wolverine can beat pretty much all of them. That's what I think. Like if I were Except to choose, for... like there's a few yeah. that he wouldn't be able to. But for the most part, I think Wolverine's got the edge over everyone just with his powers and re- being able to regenerate and having the strongest metal. What, what's what's stronger, yeah. vibranium or adamantium? I don't know. I've always wondered that. I don't know. I will say adamantium. But uh, yeah, for no reason. So I think I think that covers Spoiler Man into the universe in the Spider Verse and uh, glass but we will be back in a few days with our next podcast